Don't watch me, watch Nolzine TV. It's the best video ever and subscribe to it. Hi, I'm Queen Queezy and you're not watching Nolazine TV. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Queezy. Hi. So tell everybody where you're from. I'm from New Orleans. I'm from downtown. I don't say a particular law because... You claim it all? No, I don't claim it all. I just don't want to be associated with anything. I'm from New Orleans and I'm from downtown. Okay, so you New Orleans Queezy. Period. Alright. <laughs> also, when did you start making music? Oh, I started making music about two, three years ago. Okay. Seriously, I'm going to say, because I've been around music my whole life. Also, how like, have you been around music your whole life? For the people who don't know. Okay, so I have parents who are New Orleans legend. My dad is Dolomite. He got the song Hustler, Hustler. And my mom is Miss T. She was the first lady signed to Cash Money. First lady signed to Cash Money. Period. Period. <laughs> so, like, do you find any? Do you find like any type of like pressure? Uh, at first, like, I did. Like, um, at first, at first, I did. I think for the longest, I shied away from doing music because um, I didn't want to be in my parents' shadow, especially my mom in particular. So I was like, I'm not gonna do this. So like, I went to school. I graduated from LSU. Like, I did a lot of things in the meantime because I didn't want to. You know, being my mom's shadow, I couldn't really figure it out on my own. And then eventually I couldn't fight it. And I just started to do music. Like go to hell with it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Who influenced you before to start making music? Ooh, growing up, who influenced me to start making music? Yeah. Okay, my mom, of course. Um, Nicki Minaj. I was a, I'm still am a big Lil Wayne fan. I had an uncle who used to listen to all his mixtapes. So that's how I kind of got introduced to like really rapping and you know, those type of things or whatever. So it was Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj was the first female artist that I seen on a mainstream level that it was like, oh, this is possible. Um, my mom, of course, I used to be in the studio with my mom. My mom used to like have me in the studio. She used to be working with Blackie Mile, Magnolia Shorty, of course. That was an influence on me. Um, who else? Beyonce. <laughs> Beyonce. Um, that's all I got. Me and X, just seeing, especially seeing a lot of women from my city doing it, um, always influenced me. Okay. Also, do you have any projects coming up? Yes. I have an EP called Flavors that should be released on um, August 31st. I also have my Queen Mix. I have visuals coming from my part two of my Queen Mix volume one. Um, that should be released sometimes next week. So follow me at I Am Queen so you don't miss it. On the features on the, on the project coming up? No. Okay. Let me tell you why. My, I wanted my first project to be me so people could get a feel of what I could do and, you know, not get distracted, you know, because people like the hype of like who's on there. I wanted them to it just be me. So. Yeah, because you're shocked because you, you don't even have like your mom on there. No. Uh, <laughs> no. No, no, no. Um, so tell the people on um, like what um, like separates you um, from other artists. Oh, okay. What separates me from other artists is I like to tap into different genres. Like when I was younger, we lived in Houston for a time. So I used to listen to Paramore, Carrie, um, what is this lady name? It's a country singer. I used to listen to people, just genres that were so left from what I was used to or what I was introduced to. Um, I'm different because of my motivation. I'm like, adversity never really held me back. I've been through a lot of little different things. Um, I'm different because I'm me. I think I'm, I'm, I'm a unique person and I stay true to who I am. Okay, miss, I stay true to who I am. Period. So, tell the people, how did you come up with your name? Queasy? Yeah. Because I love Lil Wayne and Lil oh. Wayne be like Queasy and my name, my nickname is Queasy, so Queasy. And Kui is short for my real name, which I, I'm not going to mention what my real name you is. Tell people your real name? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why you going to tell me your real name? <laughs> because that's nobody's business. Or as you can say, I mean, what do you enjoy most about being a music artist? And also, I mean, what do you hate most about being a music artist? What I enjoy about it is it comes so freely. It's so natural. Um, that's why I, know I couldn't fight the urge of doing it. it. When I write songs and when I record, it feels like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel like this is my purpose. And I used to be a teacher. Like, I used to work with kids. 
and I knew the only way for me to really get through to kids was through music or whatever. Like I could stand in front of a classroom, but I don't think I have the same impact versus like my music. Um, what I hate about being in the music industry is being a female. Um, there, uh, somebody always trying to test you or like I'll be inappropriate you. with you when you're really just trying to conduct business or to do work. So that's the only thing. Like I don't feel like uh, I've witnessed females or like a girl being the toughest one in the room but getting the least respect. Like cut out rap all the dudes but still would be counted last. So that was one of the things I couldn't really, I don't really like. But I mean, it's a societal thing to be honest. So I guess it's what else. <laughs> okay. So has there ever been one point on like in your music career on like when you just want to give up? Yeah. <laughs> um. Recently I had got sick and I was like, I can't do this anymore. I don't know. Sometimes when you, when things aren't going the way you want them or what you like kind of mapped out in your mind, you want to give up. Um, I had like a particular company approach me and was interested in me and that didn't go the way that I wanted it to go. And I don't know, I don't know if it discouraged me or like brought the beast out of me. But yeah, I definitely was discouraged. Oh, they probably brought the beast out of you. I think it did too. <laughs> I was listening to, um, I was listening to you I'm like, um, what is it called? The cream. Yeah, yeah. Like, you was just saying, I was like, okay. <laughs> That's how you feel? Yes. <laughs> it's self-expression. That's like music. Uh, artists' job is to reflect the times. And I feel like mine is like opening Pandora's box. Like some of the things I talk about in my music, like you wouldn't think I'm doing or you know what I mean? You wouldn't think that. So it's like a journal that I'm like releasing to the world. Okay. So I'm like, far as your city go, do you feel like other female artists in your city on um, like basically on um, like support one another tell the truth oh lord this is so funny i just had this conversation with my mama <laughs> <laughs> because what i think about new orleans as a whole even like the males too the support is there but it ain't there i feel like i'm gonna do what i gotta do regardless you feel me like i'm I don't know. I didn't, I didn't overcame so much. Like I graduated from college, and it like how my mom and them life was mapped out. That wasn't even supposed to happen. So I'm just determined to get what's mine. But as far as females, it just depends. Sometimes you have to meet like-minded females, like women who are with the helping each other out and not being jealous of one another. I, I really don't know because I I haven't. This, the the women that I have worked with, yeah, we've been supporting one another. But I don't really know. I haven't uh -oh. touched. Um, so, like, name some females that you have worked with so far. Oh my God! Um, I worked with an artist called Lolly Mariah. I worked with. I haven't worked with like <laughs> the popular New Orleans female rappers because the female rappers here are majority like bounce rappers too. You know, like if we're talking about like popularity, I haven't dove into that yet. That's more of my mom. You sound so proud of that. Dove right into that one. That's what you did. Period. <laughs> So how do you interact with your fans on social media? OMG! Um, I'm, like if they're commenting and asking me things, I try to keep them updated on what I have coming next. I try to reply to everything that they're asking me. Um, I connect with them by giving them content because that's what they want. They don't really want to see me go missing. They want me to give them materials, give them content. They, I want feedback from them. Like, we friends, we, we talk. <laughs> That's what you feel? Yeah, we talk. <laughs> okay. okay, I got a funny question for you. Okay. Tell your fans something about you that you don't show on your social media. I'm a crybaby. I am spoiled. I am a crybaby. Are you spoiled? Yes. Oh, so I have another question for you. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure everybody want to know, are you single? Yes, I am. So who's spoiling you then? Oh my God, I spoil myself. Oh, I just had to throw that out there. <laughs> I spoil myself, independent woman, period. In my, like, my family and my friends, they spoil me a lot. So I don't know, I feel like, oh, I don't know if this is a good or a bad thing, but I was raised by a strong ass single mom. So for me, I don't be, I don't feel like I need a man to fulfill me. Do you want a man? 
Oh, <laughs> that's a trick question. What I want him for? Like, what, there's various things I might want him for, but do I need him? No, I don't know right you now. You want a man, but you don't need a man. I don't even know if I really want a man. Okay. Hey, leave me right there. <laughs> so, what's your advice to a younger female that's trying to follow on in your footsteps? Um. To never give up, to keep on going, to not get discouraged, and do not compare your journey to anybody else. Literally, you would mess yourself up. Just understand that your journey is your journey, your vision is your vision, and stay true to who you are. Like, stay focused. Um, don't get off track. Don't let men get you off track. Don't let people in your space that don't see your vision either. That's the advice I would give to anybody that's following my footsteps because that's what I'm doing now. Okay. Um, so, I'm like three years from now, I'm like, where do you see a music career going? I'm going to be at the top three years. Three years, I'm going to be at the top. Oh, so what are you doing, like, for us right now? To get myself yeah. there? Yeah. I'm working my ass off. So, in between, like, dropping the freestyles, working on original music, um, doing features. Like that's the next project is gonna have features. Um, just kind of working with different producers, um, gaining more of a following on social media, connecting with different people, um, doing interviews, like this one. Just getting more exposure to get myself where I'm trying to get more content. Out get there. more content for sure. Okay. Also, I'm like, have you ever I'm like, done a concert before? Have I ever done a concert before? Mm hmm Okay, so I have a question for you. Okay. What is your most on a memorable concert performance that you had? And, and also tell the people why. My first performance ever was at LSU's um, Fall Fest. It was literally something that I manifested. Um, my first semester at LSU, I attended Fall Fest, and I remember seeing a girl on the stage and she was singing and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> and then fast forward like three years later, I'm literally on that same stage performing. And it just, it was a game changer for me because it was just like literally if you say it and you speak it, you walk into it, it could happen. It was like no doubt in my mind. That's how I know like when I tell you like, I'm gonna be on top, I mean it because it was like manifesting, manifesting your life is truly real. Like when you started no listening TV, like it was a probably an idea. You feel what I'm saying? I've been at, I've been at the name for like maybe six years. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know what I want to do with it because I really thought about doing No Lazine as a magazine. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know magazine, mm -hmm. but like when I saw the Say Cheeses and all the people like interviewing people, like and I was looking down here like nobody does that for our artists. Mm -hmm. So I just like you know what I'm about to get out. I, I'm, I'm gonna be one of the people to actually make No Lazine artists be seen to the world. Yeah. So that's how I got the idea. You manifested. So that's that's what I'm saying. So I'm just throwing it out there for the people who probably didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So do you feel like you have to move? Oh, actually, a bit better one. Do you feel like you have to move on the out of your city? On like once your music career, on the reach a certain milestone? Yeah, I do. Um, for different reasons. Um, the reasons. <laughs> the reasons. <laughs> It's crazy. Um, it's, it's a lot of trauma in New Orleans. Um, it's in every city, but it happens with the people who actually know you. Yeah. Um, I want to stay for as long as I can, but I know <laughs> <laughs> uh, for progression purposes, I know, you, you know, like if, if, if I'm with the move, like I got to go with my move, you know, and if it's calling me to be in London or whatever, I got to go. You got to go. I got to go. I got to fulfill my I purpose. I think I'm at that point right now. <laughs> Really? Yeah. You about to go? It's coming. Who's gonna do the work then? It's you see what I'm saying? Global. If we all leave, then who's gonna do the work? I'm gonna do the work from out of town. <laughs> Where you gonna move to? Atlanta? Oh I'm my god. It, but it'll make me. It, it'll make more sense for New Orleans, and it's gonna actually bring more attention to New Orleans artists that has been on this platform already. Well, I got. I'm happy. I got you. Before you do. <laughs> <laughs> I will still be coming back. Okay. Just won't be as. Seen and as accessible to an artist. Like I feel that. Like you know? So I manifest this interview. Period. Okay. We talked like last year, and it happened this year. So you, is he working, huh? Period. Okay. So um, so tell people um basically 
I'm like, if he wasn't doing music, I'm telling him, I'm like, what would you be doing? I'll be in New York. You'll be in New York? I'll be working for a fashion company. I was about to say that. I just felt it. I would be in New York. You'll be in New York? I would be in New York. Literally, once I graduated school, I went to New York. I was in New York for like two weeks. And I was just like. So, you saw big ass red. No, I was like, <laughs> do you want to do this? Or you want to do music? Could they both? I'm doing both. But I knew if I came to New Orleans, I was going to have more opportunity to do it. Because you, you feel like this is more culture and you and you kind of and you kind of like know some people from here. Yeah, I'm embedded in the culture. Right. You feel me? Like if you talk about New Orleans bounce, you have to talk about my mom. Right. So I was like, the smart thing to do. She was on if, damn everybody's song. Huh? She was damn on everybody's song. Right. Home. The smart thing to do is to be a big fish in a little pond versus being a little fish in a fucking big ass pond like New York. But sometimes you got to, yeah, sometimes you got to take that leap and just do it. Okay, my mama was kind of frustrated that I didn't want to move, but she had to understand that it was meant for me to be here to do this work. All right. Well, you know, you can always give yourself like a, maybe like a two, three year ago and like, you know. You're so right. And I could just move, like I'm getting on, then I'm about to move and show you how big I really about to get. Yeah, yeah, I think that was the goal for me right now because at first I wanted to do everything outside of my city because I, like I said, we don't you have- You still a, should want to do everything outside. Just I do, why you're in your city. but I was like, Fuck the city though. And, and now I'm like. A lot of people feel that way. Right, but I had to get out of that mindset because as much as people say that they don't, they have people that don't support, there's a lot of people, people that do support. People will support you when they see you actually being consistent and working. Period. Like, believe it or not, like a lot of people support me, but everybody supports you different ways. Like, most people probably won't support you, like financial wise, they might not buy them work from you, but, but they probably are like telling other people about you, giving word of mouth, you know? Yeah, Everything word counts. Of mouth. Yeah, everything definitely counts. So what I decided to do is to conquer my city. I'm gonna give you advice what I tell our artists. You wanna get known fast in New Orleans? Go buy your ten thousand business cards and go outside every day and pass the motherfucker <laughs> and grab people phones and subscribe to your YouTube, just follow yourself, build your fan base up. Period. Well once you build your fan base up, that's like guerrilla marketing right there. You got it. that's you gotta do it. <laughs> I did it with Nola Lee. I got three thousand subscribers fast. So you just was Taking people phones. What? And when dudes come home from jail, take their phone too. So how long? Like, what was the the, the time period? So what? Didn't have a time period. Like basically, I just like I know how to get myself popping. How many months? It take months, but. But like, how many? Like six. I don't know how fast it came, but it came, and people saw that. Uh huh. You just gotta get yourself out there. Okay. Like most artists don't really like the real market. They like they like every artist I see. Um, that's like hustling and like and like marketing well, mm -hmm. you don't have a talent. So it's like it'd be like it don't even out. I'm so happy you told me that. I never knew that. But like actually right now in this world, I tell artists to like connect with different blogs. Mm -hmm. And just if you can, at least drop two videos a month. Now, or every week if you can. Literally when I went to Dallas, I was like um it was like this open mic. Okay. The man, the only way he would play my music is if I had a visual. Yeah, show on the big screen. A lot of artists don't have that. Like, I don't, I don't even, I don't even help artists when we have visuals. Like, you never invest in yourself for a music video. We ain't nothing to talk about. Like, cause everything that's, like everything I do works with visuals. Mm -hmm. Like when I post you, if I if I write an article about you, gotta have a visual. Mm -hmm. So you have no video. I, I'm gonna look at you like you're not investing in yourself. You're not serious about yeah, it. Yeah, you you. So if you're a SoundCloud rapper, <laughs> nobody will take you serious. Right. You're a SoundCloud rapper. Like, it's too easy to shoot music videos now. It is. Like, you go buy your own camera. And do it yourself. You can just shoot vlogs all day. Then you, then who knows but, a, oh, but you might be the cameraman, but like, you know what? I believe in you. Mm hmm That's shoot. But literally, it takes you taking the first step. You got to take, you got to invest in yourself. If you know, who will? Right. Right. I feel it. I feel it 100%. On the average, um, how many hours, um, like, do you spend, like, in the studio? Hmm. I'm trying to think because it, it, it just varies because I do work a regular job too. Um, you got to work your regular job until... You right. Know. How am I going to invest in myself? Who going to pay for yeah, it? Yeah, you got to work your regular job until um, until you make income off of off rap. The music, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm going to say I, I'm in the studio like at least two to three times a week, but I write almost every day. Okay. 
Like I'm constantly writing music. Or constantly I'm, thinking. I'm constantly thinking of ideas and I'm constantly listening to different things, um, getting inspired by other artists. So this is really like in me, in me. In me, in me. In me, in me. Like it's fucking crazy. I had a guy that was like, dude, he was a DJ. We went to LSU and he's like, I didn't know you rap. Like, I've been knowing you all this time and you never rap for me. And, like but listen, that. once I took that step, everybody started fucking with me. Like, oh, we got this. Oh, you should do this. Oh, we got the show in you, you feel what I'm saying? So it just took that one step and I was like. Well, oh, but the good thing about going to school in Baton Rouge and being from New Orleans, you can could, you could always go to Baton Rouge. You could, and you can also and try to book yourself shows in the surrounding areas. Like most New Orleans artists don't want to go to the small country towns, but all the country towns are much needed for your streaming money. My mama makes so much money from college. Oh yeah, I know. I, I used to go on the road with Fibbo even child. I saw that. So, yeah, I know. Literally, the country like, towns is the people who is your fan base in New Orleans. But like, I'm talking about like the brand new generation. Mm -hmm. They don't realize where they need to go at. Like, they automatically got to go to Houston, Atlanta. Atlanta not about to put you on first. For real. They got, they got like a thousand artists. They trying to put that's that's kids in there. From Atlanta. Yeah, they ain't even the other artists who move from other cities who just moved to Atlanta trying to get on too. It's like, if you go to Atlanta, it's like a damn, it's like a rapper city now. Mm -hmm. Everybody make music. Yep. Like everybody think they gonna get on. Literally, it's so funny because when I used to, I think I was about ten, and I used to, my mom used to be on the road with you now, and I was just exposed to so many different things to where I was like, damn, work a regular job or like. Really do this shit, cause I didn't see her make buku money just like being on stage for like 20, 30 minutes. But you gotta stay consistent. You have to stay consistent. Consistency uh, is key. But you know, in order to stay consistent, I had to plan it out. Right. And I was missing that part of it, like with these quick mixes, I gotta do them bitches like write them all down, record them, and then do visuals, but have like a month's work. You, you feel but, what I'm saying? But you can also like when you go and record it too. You can knock two out of one. Like sometimes you can shoot your quick crew mix and like in a studio. When we doing, I was doing two at a time when I first started. Now yeah. I do five. Yeah. Knock it out and then on to the next one. Cause fuck, it's only a minute and a couple of seconds. Why I can't do that in one session? Get yourself popping. Period. That's all. Yeah, you gotta work yourself. I can't believe you said that you was taking people phone. Yeah. <laughs> I still do it to this day. Like. They be like earlier, but I met like a group of girls. It was like, man, where you from? I said, I'm from here. Mm -hmm. Like, like all I'm sorry, Dola Zine shirt. I, if I took all their phones and I subscribed to everything I got, I started my website, my YouTube, in my podcast. Period. But like, that's the only way I can help other artists get known by my like acting through my platform. Mm -hmm. So you know, but you don't know who actually listen to you. Who, who, who won't be a fan? Yeah. So I like tell everybody like explain yourself in the interview. Yeah. So, since that being said, tell people, I'm like, why should they listen to you? Why y'all should listen to me? Uh, y'all should listen to me because I'm super dope. I'm super original and I'm, I'm, I'm really real with everything that I'm feeling. You should listen to me because you should support a girl boss. Period. Um, a girl boss? A girl boss. Um, you should listen to me because I might inspire the woman that you're laying next to. I might inspire the woman that had you. I might inspire the woman that calls you brother. You should listen to me because I am relatable. I am just like everybody else. I'm, I just had the courage and the guts to follow my dreams. Like I just had the the balls to be like, yeah, listen balls? to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so tell the people um, I'm sorry. <laughs> so tell the people, I'm like, what's next for you? As far as music, merch, businesses, modeling, um, fashion, I have, movies? <laughs> um, a brand called Glammy Cakes brand, but I have a t-shirt line called She Hustle. So it's all about the, the woman that hustled, that's motivated to go get it. And we're dropping a collection for Christmas. So, you know, you can be looking, it's like sweatsuits, it's gonna be real fly. Um, as far as the music, I have an EP coming. I have some features coming. Um, what else I have for the music? I'm doing a song with this guy. He's from the DMV. <laughs> That's why I love social media. Like, how the fuck he found me? Um, so I have a video that I'm shooting. Why y'all know Who knows? Yeah, look, I have a, a music video coming. Um, what else? And a couple of more projects. So just kind of look forward to that. And me staying consistent. Okay. <laughs> That's my promise to myself.
And also, last but not least, tell everybody on like where can they find you on social media and other music platforms. Okay, you can find me at. I don't even want to say it because you was like you a SoundCloud rapper. You was a SoundCloud rapper. A lot of blogs talk about SoundCloud. All right, you can find me at um, on SoundCloud at Quee Q W E E. You can find me on Instagram at I am Quee Q W E E. You can find me on YouTube because that's why I really want to get popping at because YouTube you can really make bank. To be honest. But you gotta raise so many subscribers. That's why I was taking people phones. <laughs> you can find me on YouTube at Quee, Q W E E. Everything Q W E E, like Quee. Um, that's it for, for now. I have a face. You could like me on Facebook at Q W E E. Facebook created me a page. That shit was crazy, but yeah. Yeah, good. <laughs> All right. Lazine, make him scream. <laughs>